And of course, there are so many challenges, uh, I, I don't even know where to begin. Uh, so, so let me start at the onset. Richard had mentioned uh, the lack of institutional coherence and the lack of leadership amongst the global south. And um, I should point out that um, as South Centre, we work on a daily basis with developing countries behind the build coalition. And I can tell you as a former trade negotiator, it is incredibly and increasingly difficult for the global south for developing countries uh, to really come together, develop common positions, formulate, um, and kind of you know come together to um, address their common interests in the WTO. And so we're really trying to identify, um, you know, ways in which to enhance this coherence and build better solidarity. Um, but, but this also comes back to the point that was made about the divide and rule. And increasingly, you know, this is um, a, a problematic dynamic that we're facing across multilateral fora. And so um, you would have noted that the outcomes at the last uh, WTO ministerial conference were pretty much the antithesis of development, uh, in particular the outcome on the TRIPS uh, decision. So, so just to, to give you a sense of some of the the some of the promising proposals and what we're having to deal with, um, I'd like to first mention uh, the the issue of uh, the BRICS and the common reserve arrangement that has been launched, where they are looking to uh, respond to this uh, de-dollarization issue. And so the suggestive of having a BRICS currency is, of course, um, you know, going to be a very long-term objective. And I think that there is certainly merit uh, in terms of having uh, or already charting a path um, which will serve as greater impetus in terms of building uh, more uh, trust in the financial system in terms of uh, the currency instruments in the global south. Uh, but also in terms of facilitating greater South-South trade and investment, as well as the development of deeper capital markets. Um, going on to the next one, um, UNCTAD, for example, have been advocating for a positive trade and environment agenda. I think that's quite well known. Um, and it's largely premised on incentivizing developing countries, unlike India Solar Alliance, for example, instead of punitive measures like the EU CBAM. So uh, some of the, the, the kind of uh, interesting proposals coming out of UNCTAD um, include the notion of having zero tariffs on plastic substitutes, expanding trips flexibilities uh, for developing countries in relation to climate-related goods and services in the WTO, uh, waiving trips enforcement of IPRs applicable <coughs> to such goods. Then there's the issue of ODA and climate commitments, uh, which are very clearly not forthcoming. And these are, of course, major, major impediments to development efforts of developing countries. And here, the South Center sees a lot of merit in South-South and triangular cooperation, which has shown promise amongst developing countries as a way to address some of the common challenges and achieve some of the SDGs. Now, just to get very specific on some promising policy proposals uh, that I think would really benefit from having the support, oh gosh, in this room. Um, and that is, uh, four proposals would be to strengthen developing country coalitions to advance common positions, especially in multilateral organizations like the WTO, where the development agenda has significantly eroded and been completely hijacked, really. Uh, the transfer and diffusion of technology. The African group in the WTO have recently tabled a very interesting submission, um, and they're covering six different areas in relation to the transfer of technology, where they, I'm sorry, where they're looking um, on reinvigorating discussions on the role of tech transfer in resilience building. And uh, it's very interesting because um, I think this is actually leading towards a very important recommendation in the WTO that we want to reopen and renegotiate the TRIPS agreement and also the TRIPS. Um, okay, so this is 
fundamental in terms of crafting an offensive and positive development agenda for the global south. Uh, and finally, in line with kind of this uh, you know, increased impetus to uh, focus on domestic resource mobilization, um, there's also an important um, policy instrument that unfortunately is being used by big technology firms, and that is the moratorium on customs duties on electronic transmissions in the WTO. And here it's very important that this moratorium be removed. Uh, because tariffs, of course, have been shown to be a very important policy tool in the development parts of industrialized countries, uh, but also in the an important policy tool for developing countries who are in the kind of the process of developing their domestic digital industries. And so we believe that given the massive revenue losses uh, that are taking place with digital trade uh, in electronic transmissions, that the removal of the moratorium will be very, very important. And my last one, I think that was supposed to be the last one, but one last one, and it's really the most important, and that's food security. And uh, it's absolutely fundamental that um, subsidies uh, given by developed countries to their farmers really need to be reduced, and something needs to be done in the WTO. The US has just tabled a submission last week, which is shockingly unacceptable, where they basically say that the existing WTO rules are sufficient to address the food security crisis. And in fact, they're calling for the full implementation of the rules uh, in the WTO agreements, which will result in food security, uh, which is, of course, absolutely now true. And uh, whether there are new modalities for we address or negotiate according to the current ad modalities, Something really needs to be done to reduce domestic support, uh, but also um, we have to have a permanent solution on public stock holdings food security purposes so that our countries are able to feed their people and have food sovereignty. Thank you.